What's going on there, folks? Good morning, good afternoon. It is the Earth Master here on this Thursday, February 9th, 2023. It's about 11.50 a.m. here along the West Coast in the state of California. Latest earthquake shows a 3.1 in the continued earthquake uh, movement over here around the Turkey area. Getting in on some uh, westward uh, pressure migration here across the area uh, to the west. Looks like uh, some activity kicking up uh, into western Turkey. And it uh, looks like a 3.4 over here as well. Let's see exactly where this is it uh, at. Stand by for just a second. Uh, in the Greece area, 3.4 coming in uh, overnight time frame, it looks like. Actually, that's a pretty recent quake, a couple, couple hours ago. <clears throat> Alrighty, let's see what else we got here across the region of uh, Turkey. This is going to be the uh, 4.0 and above from the USGS, showing about 10 earthquakes here centered across the area of this uh, plate boundary. Looks like they had a 4.8 overnight. Uh, the largest uh, so far in the last 24 hours of aftershock activity. Looking at the EMSC model here, uh, still shows quite a bit of movement over the last 24 hours, although limiting down a little bit here in terms of the recent quakes within the last hour. Now, the last week here still shows an impressive number of earthquakes within this region, 1,093 earthquakes. Uh, and most of that activity, of course, following that 7.8 and the 7.5 that struck there in that region uh, a few days ago. Still quite a bit of cleanup going on there and uh, unfortunate uh, situation there for the folks in Turkey and uh, surrounding regions. A little bit of activity is noted here. There's that 5.0 coming in a couple days ago. But uh, for the most part, I think... Uh, most of the activity is confined right around that region of uh, Turkey for now. All right, uh, what else we have here? Let's go ahead and <clears throat> check out the West Coast. A little bit of activity kicking off here. Into the uh, Blanco Fracture Zone, a 3.4 coming in overnight, about 2.30 in the morning. One movement earthquake, or one earthquake up here around Mount Rainier, a 3.4. That's uh, actually somewhat of a, oh no, 3.4 is going to be, uh, where's that 3.4 at? That's going to be off the coast of Oregon. Uh, this is going to be a 1.1 up here. I was going to say 3.4 up around Mount Rainier, probably not good. But a 1.1, that's a little bit more uh, realistic. Uh, down into Northern California, also down here into the southern end of the Cascadia. This is a 2.8 here on the Mendocino Fault Zone, 20 kilometers deep. So definitely a little bit of uh, overall increasing activity here across the uh, Pacific Northwest and the West Coast, where we've got a little bit of swarming going on here uh, just outside of the Kalinga area in the Pleasant Valley region. Looks like about 10 earthquakes. The largest so far is a 3.3, a 3.3, excuse me, coming in early this morning, about 2 o'clock in the morning. Uh, and it looks as though most of that activity has died off for now. Uh, but it was a pretty good cluster of earthquakes there for a short time. Uh, one earthquake outside of Napa, 1.8 coming in within the last hour. And uh, a little bit of movement up here across the Clear Lake Volcanic Field. That's been an ongoing thing for a little while, and it looks like today it's in full force as well. Pyramid Lake over here in Nevada, a couple small, very small earthquakes uh, from yesterday, it looks like. Nothing major going on across uh, Nevada currently. But uh, looking at the map here in Southern California, definitely seeing an overall trend of earthquake uptick here across the region of the uh, Ridgecrest area and the Wheeler Ridge out here, White Wolf Fault Zone as well. This movement just north of the Garlock Fault Shear Zone, which is this um, lengthy fault that kind of runs, uh, well, into the San Andreas Fault. A little bit of activity in SoCal further south one outside of the Rancho Cucamonga area, Little Creek area, 1.3. That's just off the San Andreas Fault there. And it uh, looks like north of Marietta off of this uh, Elsinore Fault segment. There's a couple different segments that run here. Had a 1.3 near Good Hope, California area. No major swarms though currently on the San Andreas Fault. Continue to watch that. 
Uh, into the Yellowstone area, things uh, rocking and rolling here over the last couple days. Nothing big, just uh, some small microquakes. I think the largest we've seen was a, uh, I think a what, 2.1 or so over the last week. See what we got for all magnitudes here. Uh, looking at about 83 earthquakes, two separate little swarms here. Uh, and again, the largest magnitude, a 2.9 Yellowstone National Park area in this cluster near the uh, Madison River area, I believe it is. Let's go ahead and check out the Yellowstone overview. Uh, this is going to show our Maple Creek, Madison River area. That's where that swarming is going to be. And it looks as though, let's see what we got. Is this the most recent time frame? 19, about 1930? 19, yeah, somewhere around there. Uh, looks like things are tapered off a little bit, although we're still seeing a little bit of movement here. Some very small spikes here at the Yellowstone area. And um, it's kind of happens quite often, actually, there at Yellowstone. These swarms come and go. Sometimes they last for a day, a couple hours. Sometimes they last for a few months. Um, so we'll see how this one plays out, although it looks like things are tapering down uh, currently there at Yellowstone. Across the plains, a little bit of movement down into the Oklahoma area. And getting a line of activity here across Texas. Mostly twos. Um, some of this from yesterday, some from today. Now it is out there in an area that does see quite a bit of uh, wastewater disposal operations. That's going to be these uh, squares out there that, with water in them. Not a swimming pool. Don't want to jump in that, that's for sure. Uh, but it is out there amongst the uh, fields of of these wastewater disposal wells and pumping operations out here around the Texas region outside of Pecos, Texas. Pretty active there overnight, looks like. Uh, one earthquake off the coast here of Delaware coming in yesterday. That was a 2.6. Now that uh, nothing else going on currently. Uh, Puerto Rico area, we're getting in on our swarming area down here, southwestern area of Puerto Rico once again with one little earthquake up around the Puerto Rico Trench from yesterday, 3.2. South America area, threes and uh, hey, they're actually reporting a 3.9. I kind of catch that, caught my eye. 3.9 Chile-Argentina border. Let's see what we got for the EMSC model here. Down into the South America region, relatively light activity today. Not a whole lot popping off. Uh, we do have a 4.2 off the, uh, uh, let's see exactly where that's at, the Nicaragua area near the coast, 77 kilometers deep, coming in, uh, uh, let's see here, fairly recent, within the last hour it looks like. Uh, weren't we just talking about the South Sandwich Islands, right? Kind of chatted about how this activity tends to pick up after we see Atlantic uh, activity out here in the divergent boundaries. And speaking of the Atlantic, over the last seven days we had uh, well, we had one up here. We did have a uh, 5.0 in the northern mid-Atlantic ridge, but I I could have swore we had another one here today. Was it going to be this one? Yeah. That looks pretty recent here. That's at uh, 11 o'clock this morning time frame. Uh, just about an hour or so ago. Uh, that quake doesn't look like it's shown up yet here on the USGS map, but there is some activity. Uh, and therefore, we're seeing some movement kick off down here into the South Sandwich Islands area, northern end of the uh, trench zone, about 35 kilometers deep for the 5.4. That one coming in about one o'clock this morning. Uh, what do we got down here? Looking at California light up a little bit here. Earthquake coming in within the last few minutes right off the Brawley seismic zone. I'll watch this area for swarming. Uh, it's not unusual to see some activity or some swarms, some but um, it is very close, within very close proximity of the uh, plate boundary here, which is the San Andreas Fault. This is going to be the one where we're going to have at least a 7.8, potentially up to an 8.1, uh, some geologists claim there. Seismologists uh, believe this is, uh, well, it's well overdue. Uh, just a matter of time before this thing decides to uh, let loose. 
So I kind of watch for some swarms uh, when they pop up there. Keep an eye on those. Alaska area looks about the same as it did last night, although a little bit more increasing activity up here around Denali. Uh, it is all centered out across the Denali fault zone and uh, spread out across the mountains. Uh, but for now, no major earthquake activity in Alaska. Or the Aleutian Trench, the Western Pacific over here looks fairly quiet as well. Um, see what we got on the EMSC model here. 4.9 coming in to the uh, area of Japan. These two earthquakes here from yesterday. Let me see when this one was. Uh, that one was today. 4.9, 276 kilometers deep, about an hour and a half ago. So nothing showing up here yet on the uh, USGS model. Maybe they're busy. It is a Thursday, right? I don't know, Monday, Thursday. What's the difference? Uh, up here around the Himalayas, it looks like a 4.1 coming in this morning time period. And a little bit of activity here well off the coast or well off the plate boundary uh, within the vicinity of the northern end of the Java Trench, northern Sumatra region. Uh, had a, it looks like 43 kilometer deep, 4.6 in the uh, Cocos Basin area. A little odd quake out there. Uh, it is within that uh, region that we've been watching. It's been relatively quiet here uh, in terms of uh, significant movement for a little while. That might be a little indicator of some uh, some good stress going on here within this region. Papua New Guinea area looks like uh, 5.1 yesterday and a couple other earthquakes throughout the evening. 5.5 there in Solomon Islands. Uh, let's see what we got here for uh, any smaller quakes. Uh, looks like the Philippines area. Getting some smaller quake activity in the 2 and 3 range. A little 2.7 there on the Java Trench as well. Uh, 1.5, I believe that was up there in Switzerland if I am correct. Let's see, uh, yep. That one coming in uh, a couple hours ago or so. One kilometer deep. Pretty shallow earthquake in that region. They do get uh, earthquakes on occasion up there. But uh, still waiting to see um, some settlement, some uh, adjustment around the region following all that movement off of this plate boundary over the last few days. Sometimes it can take a little while, so uh, don't let your guard down out there in that area. All right, let's see. The Big Island of Hawaii, most of the activity, again, can find out here to the Pahala area with a little separate swarming. Notice this activity right here. Uh, fairly deep, about 33.3. .3. Awesome, 33 uh, kilometers there below the uh, below sea level. Mostly twos out there. Uh, still a ways away from the Lohi Sea Mount, but it seems as though uh, this activity has been migrating here over the past month. Uh, more specifically offshore from the Pahala area. Notice that trend kind of stretching out here, so we'll continue to watch that. Let's see here. Um, trimmer map last night. Relatively minimal. 41 epicenters of trimmer up into the uh, Washington region. About the mid-Cascadia subduction zone. Space weather activity, we're looking at that stair step again. Kicking up here over the last couple of days. Uh, this is definitely ramping up into uh, quite a few M flares over the past, oh, past three days here. You can probably count, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, maybe five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. It looks like twelve M flares over the last three days that's uh that's a really impressive number and uh it's still continuing to climb far as the amount of flaring goes and that is due to this uh most of it's due to this regional sunspot right here you can kind of see it flaring up currently um that's been the source of the majority of the flares we're also currently watching an area around the northeastern uh, section of the sun uh here in the coming days for some potential uh, further uptick in solar flare activity. 15% chance right now for an X flare and 75% chance for an M flare. 99% chance for a C flare. Uh, there's 
a couple of the sunspots or the uh, flaring, five of them within the last 48 hours. Now that's going to be M2 plus, so it's not going to uh, count the uh, the smaller M flares. But there's been a bunch, and right now 3213 looks to be the main culprit here uh, in producing some further flaring. All these other sunspots here, uh, they're definitely active but uh, not as unstable as 3213 up here. Here's the latest imagery. Uh, notice a lot of flaring kicking off here and a lot of different uh, areas that are different colors. Red, blue, green. This telling me right there that this is a very complex magnetic structure here with that sunspot. Uh, this one down here is massive, but uh, it doesn't have that close proximity here of these um, of the structure of the magnetic field uh, that this one does. Huge, but not completely unstable. Uh, there's a couple newer regions here. Look at the southeastern region. That's got a lot of popcorn different colors here. And that could be a dandy of a sunspot once that comes around further into view uh, here along the earth-facing side of the sun. Either way, things are um, definitely ramping up here fairly nicely. There's that flaring, and uh, there's that massive sunspot that we're going to watch here in the coming hours and days. <coughs> Excuse me. Goodness. It seems like that's been happening way too often. <clears throat> Alrighty, so, yeah, there's a couple of those lower-grade flares I was telling you about. They got it marked here. Um, each little spike here in the graph is going to be a further um, a further numbered flare. Um, so, oh, yeah, they're not counting these smaller ones. But as you can see here, got a peak here, a peak here. And um, almost looks like there was two here. But uh, definitely, either way, a lot of uh, flaring kicking up currently there on the sun. There is a little bit of uh, unsettled conditions up at the higher latitudes currently around the... Uh, um, looks like Iceland, Greenland area, northern Russia up here. Looks like KP index conditions uh, kicking up there for the potential of auroras. Looks like 50 to 60 percent uh, in some of those higher latitude areas right now. And it looks as though it is due to a little bit of density uptick here and also a BZ component on the southward tilt of that um, interplanetary magnetic field here allowing some of that wind stream to flow in um, because speed's not really elevated it looks like just the density currently and that uh, tilting there of the bz component allowing that uh, solar weather condition to flow right in and create uh, some elevated conditions up there but uh, we'll definitely continue to watch this monitor it uh, here in the coming days as far as the flare uptick goes i think is definitely notable uh, noteworthy to mention the um, the major uptick right now in space weather. All right, folks, have a good day. I have a tremendous amount of schoolwork due today and over the next couple days, so I'm going to get busy on that, but I will be off here on the side, uh, come monitoring chat and whatnot. I uh, hope everyone does have a good day out there and uh, stay safe. That's the earthquake activity. Keep it right about, eh, is that right? Yeah, that's about right. 24 hours here on the globe. All right, folks, have a, have a good day. We'll catch you guys back here a little bit later on tonight. Take care.